Good evening, everybody. You're here on the town with Mike Farah. And tonight, I'm taking you to the famed Fires Club down in Beverly Hills, where we have boxing, a smoker, and tradition. And if you stay tuned, we'll show you all of it right now. I'm here with Erwin Schaefer, and Erwin is the president of the Friars Club. Hey, tonight is like 50 years ago. It's, 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 it's unusual, it's unique. You know, they, they have celebrity smokers all over the country. Right. Actually, not celebrity smokers, they have smokers. Mm -hmm. The Friars Club goes back to 50 years of tradition where we, we bring in our celebrity members, we bring mm -hmm. in our members, we put on bouts of fighting with them, we put on a gourmet dinner. It's, it's right. a fun evening, it's so unique that we sell it every time we do. We do it twice a year and, and our members really love it. It's probably the biggest event we have in addition to our roasts right. and our Lifetime Achievement Awards. Well, you know, we uh, told the story earlier in the program and the fact that this club was started because uh, George Burns and some friends had no place to go after the That's fights on Friday exactly night. exactly the truth. And here we are, Friday night, Smoker and the fights at the Friars well, Club. I'll give you a little background on the Friars Club. Traditionally, the Friars Club was established in 1908 in New York City. And all the gentlemen that belonged to the Friars Club, George Jessel, Jack Benny, Al Jolson, Bob Hope, Danny Kay, mm -hmm. Endless, came to California to make movies. Now they found themselves with no place to go. There was no more Friars Club. So one afternoon, they went one afternoon, they went out to a boxing match. Match. They came out of the boxing match. Where were we going to go? George Jessel said, "We got to have a Friars Club out here." George Jessel started the Friars Club of California, which is, and they all became, and basically most of the Friars in New York came out here, and now they're all members out here. Right. Well, the ones that are still around. And it's, it's, it's a continuation, and it'll be that way for the next 50 years. Well, you've heard it from the source. And uh, Erwin, thank you for inviting us, and we're, we're going to go in and watch the fights. Great. Enjoy. Have a great evening, and uh, come back. Follow us, guys. I'm here with one of television's most familiar faces, John Ratzenberger. I feel like calling you Cliff. Yeah, most people do. <laughs> the next question usually is, hey, where's my mail? <laughs> hey, where's Norm? Have you, have you heard about it many times? I mean, this must go follow you everywhere oh, you go. 30 times a day. What happens when that's you just a, That's before I get out of the house. <laughs> it's my kids. You know, I was uh, going through airports, and of course in Vegas, now they've, uh, looks like they franchised the Cheers Bar all over the country, especially uh -huh. in airports, where they recreated that set. And uh, it must be hard for you even going to a place like that get a beer. No, actually, uh, George Went and I are suing them. Are you really? Yeah, they used our uh, figures in those bars without asking us. Mm -hmm. well, well, actually, they asked us, but we said no, and they did it anyway. So Maybe he'll finally get paid for some of this, yeah, huh? Our next interview <laughs> might be at uh, 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 Judge Judy's court. <laughs> Judge Wapner. There you go. So, so tell me, what are you doing now? What do you look to do ahead now? Ahead? Uh, let's see. I want to oh, scrape the bottom of my sailboat, uh, get that in yeah, the water. Get the barnacles off. Yeah. No, I, uh, executive of producing a couple of shows for Fox that I created yeah. and I uh, just flew from San Francisco a couple hours ago where I finished up Toy Story 2 oh. and I also am doing another feature for Pixar called Bugs. Oh, okay. So uh, we're keeping busy. You're working hard. Yeah, yeah. How's those, how those replays must be going everywhere though. Of uh, Cheers? Yes. All over the world. Yeah, every country on the planet. I know even Los Angeles, 11 o'clock, it's like probably number one in replays at 11 o'clock after the shows. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I know one uh, local affiliate had to take it or, or change the time because it was taking people away from the news. <laughs> people weren't watching the news. So. And, and I can see why, <laughs> to say the least. Well, this is, you don't go to smokers very often, and this room is full of smoke right yeah. now. It's a little tough. Do you know how this whole thing started originally, the Friars? The Friars Club? Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of a couple of Friars. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you an interesting story. That's why I asked you this. No, I don't know. This is like quintessential. I think that's, that's one of the only things I don't know, by about the way. The Friars? Okay. Right. Well, it's a quintessential night for them because in the 40s, Jack Benny, George Burns in particular, Milton Berle used to go out to the fights every Friday night. And Beverly Hills was dead in those days. There was no place to go. So they decided to form a little club and get a clubhouse and go somewhere after the fights. And here we are, 50 years later, after the fights and a smoker in the Friars Club doing the same thing the club was founded for 50 years earlier. A lot of history here. A lot of history. Uh, just, have you looked at some of the photographs here? Oh, I don't think there's any place else in Hollywood that truly, unlike the Brown Derby, which is gone, this is a venerable old club in Hollywood. It is the 
really place that still exists today, as it was 50 years ago. Oh, I'm glad they let me in. <laughs> All the young stars are here, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm learning a lot about cigars, though, tonight, so sure. maybe one day I'll smoke one. Are you learning what you don't want to get involved with cigars with? No, I, I, mean, I, I, it's, I love the smell. Yeah. It's uh, much, you know, the cigars have gotten so much better because as this uh, hobby really has blossomed, this blossom around quality cigars, which are much different than the things we think of old grandfathers smoking and stinking up the joint with. Yeah, well, I think that's probably the next fad is uh, bad clothing. Yep. <laughs> St or stinky cigars. All right, stinky cigars and plaids that don't match. Well, you can see we're sweating up a storm here tonight. And, you can uh, see he's sweating up I a am. storm. What can I tell you? That's why I got the jacket off. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. I'm still working. Listen, have a great time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Well, if it looks like I'm sweating profusely in front of this camera, it's because I'm with Cher, who's Pet of the Month for Esquire magazine. Well, you fit right into this thing, don't you? Yes, I certainly do. I had, I actually had the only layout ever in Penthouse where they had the model smoke a cigar. Really? <laughs> I can see why you're here. <laughs> yes. Th this is a, this is a crowd tonight. Yes, it is. I, I can't believe all the people I've been meeting. It's, it's, it's incredible. There's a lot of old Hollywood here running around this evening. A lot of old Hollywood, and that's something that we need to get. A lot more out sure. there. So tell me, Cher, what are you doing now besides uh, being pet of the month? What are the next projects you have looking forward for you? Actually, I just graduated cum laude at Northridge University. Northridge? Yes. Do you know that's my alma mater? No, I don't. Yes, that's my alma mater. And I graduated with the music major. I play classical clarinet. Mm -hmm. And I also work in the NASDAQ stock market. I work with a stock market timer. Mm -hmm. um, he's teaching, going to teach me everything he knows. Okay. I do that, I do my music, and I do modeling. You know, so you can imagine. It's, it's a busy schedule. You can imagine how busy I am, but I enjoy all three. So. That's great. You'll enjoy the stock market because every once in a while, we have the famous Hollywood stockbroker on who does interviews for us. Oh. And if we can introduce you to him later this evening, he'll be a real interesting person for you to meet. Oh, that would be wonderful. All right. Good. That would be wonderful. All right, we'll see if we can find that famous Hollywood stockbroker. We're Thank on the you. lookout, okay? Thank Talk you. Talk to you later. Okay. Here's another familiar face for smokers. Is this the? Is this well, I don't like. To, I don't know if I want to be considered a familiar, familiar face for smokers. I mean, I've been to a couple cigar nights in my day. I tell, I'd have, I've been to a lot of cigar nights. I haven't been one as a smoky as this though. Yeah, this is not the best ventilation here. I for much prefer the uh, Grand Havana ventilation for smoking cigars. I, you know, I tell you, I'm kind of excited about tonight because what happens is, this is like with the uh, Friars of Old work, is the cigar nights were built around fights they used to have on right, Friday night. Right. So to actually have fights in the ring, which we don't see too much at, at, at uh, modern day smokers is really a throwback. And I think it's something that the fighters really look forward to is oh, breathing yeah. a lot of heavy smoke. I think <laughs> that's really their true desire. When they get it, they don't want to really win the fight as much oh, as they are when they avoid emphysema as they're uh, fighting. Ninth, tenth, and twelfth round yeah. all, the, all the way through. Well, you know, we we they, quit smoking. Last time we quit smoking during the fights, which made it nice. We were bringing Wolfgang Puck over with us, but we, he was pitching us in the, in the American Cancer Society, so we didn't think it was too appropriate yeah. to interview him and then come back Probably over not, this no. side. Well, if you don't inhale cigars, so they're not quite as bad for you. You know, the, uh, there's a lot of Hollywood memorabilia here. I mean, right. there's a lot of legend on the wall. Exactly, right there. Red Buttons, one of the great friars right there. There's his... The Lifetime Achievement Awards through this room is unbelievable. Right. These sure. The names. Now, you've got a lot of new things coming up, and you're kind of, kind of, I want to say in cyberspace on uh, television. Are you doing web? I'm involved like with that? web TV uh, and this bringing the internet to your television set. Oh, it's okay. a box that allows you to do, browse the World Wide Web and the internet right on your television. Right so on we launched control, yeah. a remote control or a keyboard and we launched that and uh, I'm doing a lot of shows on uh, electronics and home entertainment for home and garden television. Oh, good. Oh, you got anything? Oh, sorry. So we talked to someone else who was just on Fox and, and as I'm looking at how television's progressing and now really going on to cyberspace and going on to the internet, it's unbelievable what's happening in technology on television today. Well, people are trying to merge, you know, uh, entertainment with information and that's what the internet is, sort of a mix of both, you know, if you want to get what you want when you want it, that's what the internet's all about. Well, we're going to grab you later on downstairs when we, before the fights begin. Oh. We'll get you to comment in a few of the fights. Is that for a us. promise or a threat? No, no, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> all right, nice all right, to see everybody. you. Thank okay, you, buddy. So I have to make an apology to Anthony Davis. Uh, Anthony uh, has probably one of the most famous comeback games in folklore history and university history, and especially out here in California for SC. 
I want to apologize to you because I've told the story many times at a banquet and used one of your blockers as a foil. We're at a sports banquet and Steve O'Brien, who did a block for you on the run back against Notre Dame, last play of the first half, 1974? 1974. That's how old we are. That's right. I don't want to say how old we are. <laughs> so I always introduce Steve O'Brien as the person who, I don't want to say gave you a block, but was pivotal in that play. As the footage rolls, the kids watch you run for that great touchdown, and then Steve O'Brien stands up and starts taking vows of SECU. <laughs> and the kids don't know the difference. Now, we've done that about four times as a foil at some SC banquets. And on our show, just about, um, oh, just about two months ago, I had John Robinson on. And Mike Lamb, uh, Fred Cornwell, Paul McDonald, we were going back over great plays. But your game is probably the proudest game that SC players talk about, even well, if they didn't play that time. Well, over the years, you know, the last 20 years, you know, people constantly talk about the feats of that 1974 game. Yeah. And I, I always want to know, why do people keep talking about something that happened 22, 23 years ago? Well, just until this year, SC didn't have too much to brag about with Notre Dame in the last 10, 12 years. But, but let me tell you this. If, if you'd have told me 20 years ago, at the, at, at the climax of my 74 game, right. that SC would go like 14-0, and 0, I'd say something was wrong. <laughs> but that's the truth. Yeah. And uh, But let me tell you something. FC's not out of, out of the out of the, the win yet because they got to go back this year and Notre Dame's going to be very tough when they go back to South Bend. Oh, yeah. Well, this was an interesting year because of all the years, I would have thought last year or the year before they would have won. I wouldn't have predicted it this year. And kind of the game, it was it was not a great game because I think Notre Dame did an awful lot to help them to win, too. Well, first of all, you know, Notre Dame, I think, had five turnovers in that game. Mm -hmm. And I think if you have one turnover left, they win that game. So, FC didn't decisively beat Notre Dame. Right. So, in, from my standpoint, the great games we've had, either it was a total blowout, either a grudge match, where it was a tight game and very little mistakes. Right. So, but I tell you, when they go back this year, and with the changing of the guard, new offensive coordinator, new offensive system, right. new quarterback, new personnel, uh, SC have their hands for it because they have they have a great program back in South Bend. Right. They do. Uh, I thought uh, Robinson did a pretty good job in recruiting the last couple of years. He had a pretty good recruiting classes. Well, you know, John has a, had, had a good recruiting class, but the, the, back to what I was saying, when you change systems and change mm -hmm. coaches or coordinators, especially the offensive coordinator, sure. you have to find the players that's going to fit into your philosophy and to the system and see what you can do offensively overall. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm waiting to see. And you got to remember also, they open up a Florida State this year who has really missed, missed a beat. So that's going to be the test. And then in between the Florida State game and the Notre Dame game, you got Washington, you got the Stanford, you got the Pac-10 the Pac right. Wolves stepping up as well trying to knock off USC. Uh, what do you think about the quarterback this year? Do they have a good, quarter, good enough quarterback? Well, they got great three, they got three uh, great prospects. But the thing is, they don't know which one is going to fit in yet. I mean, they all got great ability, great athletic ability. But uh, with Hugh Jackson, offensive coordinator, he's trying to find out who can really fit the system in terms of what they want to do and accomplish. You know, I know we're at the Friars and we're here at a smoker. But when you get around this guy, you got to talk football. I mean, our cameraman, Rich Zielinski, who uh, does films for SC football for many, many years, I had two models from Penthouse I was supposed to interview. Right. He pulled me off the shoot and came running over. Andy Davis! Get him over well, here. Well, first of all, you should, you, you should club him for that because beauty becomes it from age. You see what I'm saying? You see, you shouldn't do that. Next time, if you see a beautiful woman, you interview her first and me second. <laughs> well, this is a San Fernando Valley boy like I am. Of course, I went to an all-boys school. You went to one of the toughest schools. I can. Did you guys? You guys didn't play night games there, there for a while. We played night games. We had some problems there. You know, uh, sometimes some of the games had to be moved to neutral locations, especially in the yeah. playoffs. And you had a problem, but that was part of the whole with nostalgia of, of the right. San Fernando area and San Fernando High School. Also, what I want to tell you also, I just had a call today yeah. that uh, I'm going to your high school. Uh, I think <laughs> no, it, Notre Dame in the Valley, home of Terry Donahue and Mike Farrell. That's right. And I'm going John there Vella. to oh, yeah. help raise money for kids, that, for inner city kids and alumni that's going to help inner city kids go to the uh, University of Notre Dame, South Bend. Well, I got news for you. I got called today from uh, Brother Bill and Charlie Perkins, that group over there, and our show on the town is going to actually cover that with you there. Well, that's good. <laughs>
Yes. <laughs> so we're, we're going to remake that. We're going to be back again on camera. But let me tell you something. My daughter, she goes to a Catholic school. And uh, my daughter goes to modern day, by the way. Modern right? day. <laughs> and uh, they rise all the time. How can your father go to USC <laughs> and not go to Notre Dame? You know, we're big supporters of Notre Dame. Right. But there's one thing I want to say about Notre Dame, USC. That is the greatest rivalry of all time in college history. history. Yeah, I don't true. care what anyone says. That's the greatest true. rivalry of all time. And uh, and I'm glad to be a part of that. Hey, I'm glad to be here with a legend, Dan. Thank, Thank you, very you, my much. friend. I'll see you at Notre Dame. Thank you. <laughs> Mike, you're a stud. Okay, thank you. Let's make five copies of that. <laughs> Mike, you're a stud. You're a stud. You know, while stud. inside, I spotted three old friends of mine, and you know, they have one of the best jobs in town. Maybe not as good as mine, but Terry, you're uh, one of the Jägermeister girls, and we bump into you everywhere at these charities, don't you? It seems like it. Um, yeah, we're here tonight at the Friars Club. It's, it's a great charity. They do so much for the community at large, and we are happy to be involved. Our company, Jägermeister, also mm -hmm. sponsors lots of events. Yeah. Um, we get involved in golf tournaments, um, charity dinners, um, any type of event that really helps the community, we're more than happy to get involved mm -hmm. in. I've got here with me Sky and Lisa today. Right. And old, old friends of ours. Yeah. Hi. Right. Hello. They're two of our Jägermeister girls, mm -hmm. and they have just been doing a great job getting the word out about our product and also helping support the uh, the charity, getting people mm -hmm. more involved and more excited about it. Now, I've uh, spent some time at St. Patrick's Day last year where they had a couple little green little plastic cups that are on strings, you oh, know? Yeah. Yeah. So we had, a, we had a toast for St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. And, uh, but I didn't see that tonight, so I guess at the Friars Club we don't do that, do we? Well, no, and besides that, it is mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Day. Okay. So we, we try. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a smoker tonight, so you will see the girls yeah. with pins and with cigar cutters I'm and smoking cigars. Yeah. Smoking cigars, and we've got cigar <laughs> ashtrays, and and we're just going around helping um, sell raffle tickets and right. do more things uh, to help the community. So at each one of these charities, you kind of come in lend a helping hand and uh, get involved. Right, we've done all of the um, Friars Club smokers, and mm -hmm. you know this is a continuous thing for us that we are um, involved in because we're really supportive of of their events. Right. So. Um, yeah, so anything we can do to uh, help out, get the word out, to, uh, and give back to the community. It's fun for us. I, I want to ask my friend Sky a little something. Now, you do a lot of these different events, and sometimes they're car races or, as we said, golf tournaments and things like this, but smokers. Do you smoke cigars yourself inside? You know what? I just recently took up cigar smoking, and I really, really love the taste of cigars. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Maybe I was meant to be a man. No. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm not going to touch that line. Uh, how about you? What do you think? Well, I've dabbled in a few smoking of cigars, and yeah. I enjoy it. Different taste. It's nice. It's really, it used to be taboo, but you know, it's now become the no. in thing, even yeah. among women. women. I think it looks sexy when a woman smokes yeah, a cigar. very sexy. Well, maybe just before they leave, I think we're going to have you all come back with cigars. Okay. okay. And we'll do a light. Yes. And sure. maybe I'll and maybe I'll show you how to light the cigars, because I'm an aficionado, you see. And we'll use a Jägermeister Meister clipper. Okay. Oh, I, think we can, I think we can arrange it. Okay. I don't think we have a choice in that, but no. we'll bring them back on later. We'll show you how to light a cigar, okay? Mm -hmm. And we'll come back and uh, we'll show you how these girls do it. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where Harlem sits? Putting on the hits. Spangled guns upon the bed, be up high bounds and down the left, be all this fits. That's where each and every Lulu Bell goes Every Thursday evening in her swell clothes Round and elbows, come with me And we'll attend the Jubilee And see the tent their last two bits I'm here with a very familiar face to the Los Angeles sports scene, Orlando Warwich. And Orlando, now that you're retired from basketball, as a player, you're now a coach, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm working with the WNBA right now, and uh, we're starting our inaugural season. Right. Um, you know, we're really excited about it. Uh, you know, women now have an opportunity to extend their careers, you know, long be sure. be um, uh, fuller than college. And, you know, they're excited. We're excited. I think the mm -hmm. fans are ready. They're ready. And, you know, it's going to be fun. You now, tell us about your team. Well, we have a very exciting team. Uh, we have Lisa Leslie, an Olympian, uh, right. who's a great player. We have one of probably the biggest players in the league. We have yeah. a Chinese player, 
girl named Zing. She's about 6'8 and about 250 pounds. So she's going to be throwing her weight around. Yeah. You know, we also have an exciting point guard, Penny Toller, who plays a lot like Isaiah Thomas. And yeah. just a load of, of talent that, you know, they're ready to go out, ready to prove what they can do. And, you know, I'm excited for them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're hungry, uh, they're talented. And I just want everybody to check these women out because, hey, <laughs> they can play the game. They really can. Well, here we are. We're on June 20th, but you have your season opener, what, tomorrow night? Tomorrow afternoon, as a matter of fact. Yeah. One o'clock game. Uh, come out and see us if you can at the forum. If not, it'll be on television. Now, uh, the forum is their home court. It's going to be the home court. It's going to be it's, it's just the, the same people that own the Lakers. Right. You know, it's it's uh, Johnny Buss is the owner. Um, uh, Rhonda Wyndham's the general manager. Uh, right. The coach is Coach Shaw from former for USC, won championships there. Right. And uh, it's just a lot of excitement, man. We're ready to go, and we're <laughs> ready for the people to see what they can do. Well, we're at a smoker. I don't think we have to worry about stunning his growth. No, Although, I, I, <laughs> I, think, I think it's okay. I can get away with one, I hope, you know. <laughs> now, we cannot let you get away as a former Laker without well, talking about the Lakers today and the prospects for next year. Well, I think they're going to be a really good team. Well, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're a little spoiled here in L.A. You yeah, know, of course, part yeah. of those, in, in the 80s, we had some great teams. This team has the same makeup. You know, they're young right now. They're trying to yeah. find themselves, uh, trying to get used to each other. You know, we were disappointed because we wanted it all. But, right. you know, this team, in view of all of the, the, the uh, mistakes that they made of being a little young, still yeah. play good basketball. But I think in the next year or two, we're going to be right back where we were in the 80s. Well, you know, we lost Magic as a superstar, but right. we came right, right with Shaq. How about Van Exel? Well, you Is know, he the point guard you think they need? Well, right now, Van Exel's trying to fit in. Uh, you know, unfortunately, when you have a team full of athletes, uh, you only play with one basketball, so you're going right. to need a guy who's going to distribute the basketball. You know, right. Van Exel's more of a one-on-one -on -one player. So I really don't know. It's kind of a gray area right there. But, right. you know, with the team the way it is, you know, once they get a feel for each other a little more, I think they gain a lot of experience for this year. You know, right. young fella Kobe Bryant's doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. I think they'll be all right. I think, I, I think we'll, we'll be happy in the future. Well, you know, when Shaq was out of there towards the end, uh, there was a problem with scoring. Everyone didn't right. know where to go to. Right. And of course, with Sabalas gone, he might have been really a good person to keep there. What did you think about that? Because he would have been, he would have stayed and scored right. when Shaq was not available. He would have been a consistent scorer. Uh, you know, unfortunately, some of the things off the court kind of take away on the court. And, right. you know, I think it's a situation where a lot of frustration on Cedric's behalf, on the team's behalf, and right. sometimes it's best to kind of, you know, part your ways and, and go away friends until you stay and things get ugly. But, right. you know, Robert Orr is a great pickup. You know, a guy with a lot of experience. He has a right. couple of championship rings. And, uh, I think he's a good guy for it. You know, like I said, there's a lot of new guys trying to gel together, and all we have to do is just give them a little time. Well, for your career, to leave the Lakers and then go to the Bulls? Right. Wasn't too bad. Well, huh? you know, actually, just <laughs> vice versa. You know, yeah. I was with the Bulls for, you know, I feel very fortunate in my career. I played with a lot of great players. I played right. with uh, Michael Jordan for two years. I, you know, played here with the Lakers with some of those great players, Magic, right. Kareem. And I played with guys like George Gervin. I was one of the bad boys in pist with the Pistons, you know, with Dennis Rodman, Isaiah oh, yeah. Thomas, Bill Lambeer. So oh, yeah. I've seen a lot of basketball, and, uh, you know, I've been very fortunate. And yeah. also played under some great guys, you know, right. Chuck Daly, a coach, uh, uh, Pat Riley. I, the list goes on and on. So I'm very happy with the career that I had. You know, I'm not surprised. Chuck Daly, I thought, uh, with the criticisms of the coach who was here, mm -hmm. uh, they decided to keep him, and maybe that's a good choice. But to bring Chuck Daly here and maybe bring you know, Rodman here, there was a lot of speculation. You know, I, I was really excited about the, the chances of Chuck Daly coming here because one, one, of the, one of his fortes is he knows how to blend talent. He knows how right. to come in and, and put guys in position to do what they do. And um, the players really respect him. I mean, after all, to handle Dennis Rodman and to right. keep him in line, you know, that's a job <laughs> in itself. So, you know, he's a great coach. He's a great guy. It's, unfortunately, we didn't get him. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Dale Harris is, is, is a guy who can make transitions. You know, I think he learned yeah. from some of his mistakes this year. So, yeah. hopefully, if everything stays intact, we still have a chance. Well, first of all, Dennis Rodman, doesn't he have Chuck Daly's initials <laughs> as a tattoo on his body? You know, it's, it's unbelievable, the tattoos. You know, back a couple of years ago, when right. I was playing with him, is when he first started. You know, he just had yeah. like one or two now. But, hey, it's right. Hollywood. Yeah. Hey, I tell you, it's putting a burger in your face and getting messy I with know, this guy. I know, But you know what, though? You know, he's getting a lot of bad rep, but those of us who are in the league, we understand. Dennis Rodman is one of the best athletes to ever right. play our game. You know, it's kind of unfortunate that a lot of his attention is kind of going away from the court when he's right. so great on the court. And yeah. I think if he can take a little time to kind of get back to that, 
things would be a lot better. You know, after after watching later in the season, I really think that the referees were very unfair to him. They, they were, were calling right, him right. every second, even if it was if, if, if he was being hit. Right. And I think that really took away from the game. It took away from the game. It took away from his game because right. Dennis, you know, we got to be very good friends. He's a very sensitive guy, believe right. it or not. Yeah. And he listens to the, you know, he listens, he reads the papers every day. He listens to the news, and if something right. said negative about him, you know, it has a negative effect. Right. Um, you know, unfortunately, like I said, I, I just wish that he could concentrate a little more on just the basketball aspect right. because he's such a great player. You think that Chicago resigning? I really, my, my gut instinct is no. Yeah. You know, because right now Chicago, they have a lot of decisions to make. Yeah. You know, they're fat cats now. They got five rings. But right. the question is, where do you want to go with the future? Uh, right. I don't know if Dennis, for the Chicago Bulls right now, is something they want to invest as far as, you know, long term. So. Right. Well, you know, Michael Jordan, I think, said it best at the end of the season. He said, I can understand investing for the future. Right. But you do that after you lose the championship, exactly. not while you have it. Well, you know, let's be real. And he wants, it, he wants it again. Well, let's be real. Listen, the old cliche is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's true. You know, That's and, true. and let's look at another thing. Chicago won a championship and did not play necessarily well this year. That's true. They did not play good basketball. So for a team not to play well and still yeah. win a championship, why mess with it? You know, it's funny. I think Robin, they asked him about going to Los Angeles. Yeah. And he said, that place is too freaky for me. I mean, who is <laughs> no. he kidding? Who is he kidding? Well, you know, let's be <laughs> He fits real. in. No, he, he bought he a house it. in Newport. Right, right. You I know mean, what? who's he kidding? I think, you know, Dennis says things sometimes just to, just to aggravate people. Yeah. But I like think the, Mormon, would, you the know Mormons what? found that out. They found that out. I found that out. <laughs> but you know what? I, I think Dennis would fit in well here. Yeah, he would. I really do. You know, because... This lifestyle I hear would cater to what he's trying to right. do. Chicago, you know, I was in Chicago for five years for the Bulls. And right. Chicago's more of a blue-collar mentality, and I think they're losing a little patience. Whereas out here, we're a little more understanding, a little yeah. more giving, as long as you do your job. Right. Well, we're so, Hollywood. But, you know, right. he's got he's playing with Luke Longley, who, right. who's not really an offensive threat. Right. So Robin uh, is, on, is a better rebounder. Robin's a better rebounder than he is. Right. If he played with Shaq, Robin can rebound and doesn't have to think about offense. Right. Do what and he take does a little best. pressure off Shaq. You know, right. one thing, because Shaq's looking at two or three guys, they're beating him up. Yeah. He needs somebody else to come in there and take some of that pressure off. And right. Dennis could be a, possibly a guy he for could. that. He could. He, he will be out there. He will be available. So, but one thing, I have the utmost confidence <laughs> in Jerry West. He'll find the right guy. <laughs> he, he always is. does. If you want to see this guy in basketball, you check out the Women's Basketball League at the Forum. They're playing the daytime. And you'll see one of the coaches on the side, huh? Yes. He may... On the side and we're all around. Thank okay. you, man. Thank okay. you very much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a blast here at the Friars Club. Next week, we're coming to you from Lyona University, where we're helping the Sisters of St. Joseph and Mount St. Mary's College. Until next week, same time, same place. We'll see you then. You're on the town with Mike Farrow. Oh. Oh, thank you, ladies. You're on the town. That's our show for this evening. You are on the town with Mike Farah, and we came to you from the famed Friars Club down in Beverly Hills. Next time, same time, same place, we'll bring you another great show from another great charity. Hope you had a great time. I sure did. Good night.